Hey y'all, my name is Nick and welcome back to State of Woods Co. We have a Thunder Nova 51 100 watt CO2 laser and we've been running it for some really long production runs, days at a time even. We have been building out our shop for four years now to be a full video content creation shop with production ready machines to teach people how to get into that. There is a lot to learn about automation machines and how to get them to run the most efficient as well as produce the highest quality parts that you can. I left my medical career after 11 years to do woodworking and production full time and I taught myself how to get into that side of the business. How to find and source good machines, how to find the jobs, and how to make the machines work for me the best. The Thunder Laser is a huge part of that. I wanted a machine large enough to do large sheet cutting. I wanted one that stood up to long runs of production well. So you're watching this video to see how it stood up to these long runs. Well, let's look at what we have done with the machine. So when I say production runs, I mean that I'm doing a very repetitive engrave or cut over and over and over again. The same thing running many times back to back with little to no downtime. Now, of course, we do small one-offs and tests as well for people, but 95% of everything that we've cut on this machine has been long runs. We use Lightburn for all of our design work and sending files direct to the laser. Cool thing about Lightburn is it keeps track of all of our hours and cut times on the machine. Let's look at what all of our times are on this unit. We can see that our laser has been turned on for 355 hours. That's the machine just powered on. That doesn't include cutting. Processing time is when the machine is making motion. So the gantry and the laser head making movements inside the laser. That equals around 207 hours. The laser has been firing for 184 hours total. That's the laser tube actually activating and doing the cuts or engraves. Our last job we ran was around almost two hours, which shows you how long some of our production runs can take. This isn't the average for all runs. Production runs usually take between 15 minutes and two hours, depending on the parts and the material that we're cutting. Now, I'm not sure honestly what's worse on a laser tube, long jobs or lots of quick little jobs. I would assume long job runs are harder on the tube because of the heat being generated and that repetitive firing. We also have to take into account the mirrors and how they would stand up to the heat and exposure during long runs. The other thing that we have to think about is the other items during these long cut times that could be getting abused, like the chiller. It will have to work overtime during long cuts to help keep the tube flush with cool water to prevent that from overheating. Now every laser tube has a lifespan number given to it, or like a thousand hours and so forth, depending on the quality of the tube. I don't think we're anywhere near the life expectancy of this tube, I'm not worried about that just yet, but how did the machine hold up to all of our production jobs? How has the machine held up? Well, for me, it's been amazing. With all the abuse I have put it through in such a short amount of time, I have been very happy with how the Thunder has performed. The ability to draw up a product and set it up in the laser easily has been great, but the big thing for me is to be able to start a job and walk away without worrying about anything going wrong. That's what I love about automation, having the ability to have a machine run on its own without worry of giving me bad parts. This unit has been extremely reliable, which is huge. Most of the time, once we cut a sheet and we know all the settings and safety things are right, we set the laser and walk away to do other tasks. It's just feed, unload, feed at that point. Now I will preface that everybody says, never leave your laser unattended. And I sorta of do that and sorta of don't. If I'm not in here, I have a video camera that is watching it so I can have access to the machine at all times and know that everything's safe. If I see something wrong, I'm just run in here and fix it. The machine has obviously taken some wear and tear when it comes to dust and dirt on everything. The majority of material that we've been cutting on the machine has been acrylic. Cool thing about acrylic is that there's not much soot or ash coming off like there would be for wood products but we do cut wood from time to time on here. I did not clean the inside of the bed or the honeycomb so that I could show you how much buildup there would be. We mostly cut acrylic on here, so even our honeycomb bed didn't get really nasty. We are doing a whole video on maintenance and cleaning of your laser, so check that out on our channel. The inside of the debris tray is slammed with millions of little parts and pieces coming off the bed. This is after 184 hours of cutting, probably 60,000 different parts. It's really cool to see this, but I would clean this way more often than I did. It could be a fire hazard if you're cutting things like wood or paper. 
We did a couple things during these runs to make sure that everything stayed working properly. I did wipe down the rails and add a little oil every once in a while to keep things moving smoothly. The biggest and most important thing to regularly maintenance are your mirrors. Keeping them clean and aligned is very important. If your mirrors start to get dirty or damaged, the power of the laser starts to reduce and cause the cutting power to drop. You may find that parts are not falling out or cut all the way through after a while. That's a clear sign your mirrors are dirty. So regular cleaning of those is very important. We did end up replacing our mirrors maybe three quarters of the way through because of what I thought was some pitting or destruction of the mirror itself. Almost like the mirror finish was burned off. Mirrors aren't all that expensive to replace and I didn't expect to replace them for several years, but I think that long repetitive work caused them some wear to the point where I needed to replace them. Now mirror alignment has never been an issue for me yet. I checked the alignment of everything when I first got the machine and it was dialed in pretty dang close. It's still right on now for the beam. The red dot may be slightly off now, but not enough for me to want to fight with it. We did dump and refill the chiller once during these 187 hours of running. The water didn't seem all that dirty or anything and the chiller never showed signs of running hot or being overworked. I just like to change it periodically to make sure it's never going to give me trouble. Just refilling with distilled water is easy and only takes a few minutes to change. I have been extremely happy with the ability and quality of this machine. I feel like with these jobs and the hours of just constant running, it's held up well. She would have definitely paid for herself several times over by now. It does feel like we abuse her, but I don't think there is much to gripe about with this unit. Most lasers nowadays at this level can handle most anything that you throw at it. I don't mess with small desktop lasers, so I can't speak about those, but these larger standalone units work really well. So I've been happy with the Thunder laser. It's done everything that I wanted to do with little fuss or resistance. I have videos coming that talk about automation machines and getting into production run jobs. Whether it's CNC, laser, plasma, we will cover it all. So go ahead and hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that information. Learn your machine, push its limits, and get your jobs done as efficiently and as high quality as you can. Laser and CNC is all about time and quality. With those two things perfected, the money will come in. I hope you enjoyed this and Man, I think I need a new closing statement. Until next time, enjoy your laser. I have always said CNC. That's so funny.